name's Tori West and I'm the editor and founder of Bricks Magazine and this is the I Did That podcast powered by TikTok. On this episode, we meet Belle Priestley, who is the latest name to be added to the cast of Netflix's hit series, Heartstopper. Before her acting debut, Belle had already garnered over 1 million followers on TikTok through sharing her candid experiences of transitioning. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to have you on this podcast. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm also so nervous. But I should be no, fine. no. If this is a safe space, we're nice yeah. here, I promise. <laughs> You're safe here. Thank um, you. Let me go to my first question. So I guess the first thing is absolutely congratulations. Thank you. I've followed you for a while on TikTok, oh. so I saw the big reveal. Yeah. That we were just actually chatting about before. Yeah, th so that was really weird because it was like months after I got told. So I had to keep it in for ages. It's such a big secret. I know. I was saying to someone before that, like, when I found out and I couldn't tell my friends, like, I would be in, like, some random locations, like filming with friends, like, where are you? Like, you're supposed to be in my house. Oh my outer. god, so you couldn't even like tell any of the closest friends. I to told them like filming. at the end, because I was like, it got to the point where like, are you actually like okay? I was like, yeah, I'm just doing like camping trips, like camping you know, like, trips. I was, like, just my dad a lot. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, but then after a while, I was like, no, guys, I need to tell. Luckily, I had one friend that I found out when I was with them. So like, we sort of like had a moment, and then I was like, oh, can, yeah. I can tell one person. I told my mum, but mum told everyone. So shout out to mum. She know. couldn't wait. I know. Well, I went to the local pub, this is a while ago, and um, some boy came up to me and was like, oh yeah, your mum told me about this Netflix thing while I was on the, was on the squat rack. And I was like, sorry, what are you on about? I was like, oh, I don't understand what you're on about, sorry. And then I had to like vacate the situation very quickly before people heard it. Oh my God, I'd be like, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I've been hacking. Yeah, like what? <laughs> sorry, like, yeah, I've been like, I'm like, yeah. I've been, I've been on retreat. Yeah, like <laughs> yoga retreat. <laughs> like, oh that's so wild I never would have had to I'm also quite bad I get so excited about like when I get to do a project yeah. and even if I have to be I, I don't want to do this thing where I like jinx it so if I, I know, talk yeah. about it I'm scared I'm going to lose it if I've acted like I already have I it I know when I got the audition I had a few friends that like I because I haven't acted in ages and I have friends that sort of do drama school and I was like asking like opinions like can you like tell us a show I was like no I actually can't because I jinx this I will like forever hate myself mm. and I watched a show with my mum and I was like I can't watch the second season if I'm not in it now because like like it's such a good it's amazing and I was like god I've just like I need to I do love anywhere. season one I genuinely cried yeah. a couple of times watching it I know me mum cried it I was chatting to Baby Queen who did the music on the first season yeah. And we were saying, like, growing up uh, queer, we wish we just had that show because the representation in it is just so amazing. Yeah, it's like every single category. Yeah. It's represented. And, like, makes us everyone in the queer community at some stage feel seen. I yeah, think it's really good exactly. at that. Exactly. Um, so I'll go back a bit. How did yeah. you feel when you first saw the casting role? You mentioned that you were with a friend or your mum. Yeah, so... Um, what did you... I know you couldn't tell anyone, but how did you celebrate? So... When I, so when I found out, my manager messaged me saying that this role, luckily I knew someone that was part of the casting team. So they sort of reached out to me and I was like, there's no way. I, f I, remember, I remember like finding out when I was like, in the morning, I'd gone out the night before. And then I was like, oh, I must be still drunk. I was like, there's no way I've got this role come through. I was like, there's absolutely no way. And then my manager was like, no, you need to sign. And then DA, like, you got the audition this week. And I was like, oh. Okay, here we go. So I did that, and then, like, it was. I've never, honestly, for them two weeks, like, I've never been so scared in my life. Like, because obviously, you, I couldn't tell anyone, I couldn't stress to anyone. So it was just my everyday message manager, like, hi, like, have you found anything? Like, have you found anything? And then one day. Can I tell you how stressed I am? I know, yeah, like, can I just vent to you, please? <laughs> I have no one else. Uh, and then, yeah, so found out, and then I think I just celebrated with my one friend and my mum. And then the night, like, a few days before, I had like a little night out with all my close friends that I sort of had told that I knew it was coming out in a few days. So, because I just wanted to have like one last like hurrah before sort of it came out. Because I, I love heaven for the club. And I was like, I want to go to heaven Me before <laughs> like Hearts of Comes gets announced. That'd just be wild. But um, yeah, it was so fun. And then I had like a party once it got announced and I had all my like sort of friendship groups come over. It was really fun. It was such a good that. night. Yeah. That's so nice. Just yeah. like one big night before this all kind yeah. of like comes out i know i have to do some sort of like viewing party or something i know hopefully one day Aww. Yeah. um what were was this always a career goal for you or what were your career goals before so i was always like 
So before TikTok, ever since I was younger, I've always acted. And I've, I did that GCSE. It's actually, funny story, my drama teacher, shout out to Miss Smith if you're watching, um, she, so I was going to go to drama school after GCSE, and she was like, oh, like, not in a rude way, but there's no point because there's no trans roles going. And I was like, yeah, like, cool. Oh, you look at me now. So, yeah, shout out to you. Uh, she, was, she was not very nice anyway, but... Um, I think it's always good, though, is when you can prove um, to someone who's in a state of authority, who's yeah. literally telling you, who isn't in your experience, yeah. and say, you can't do this, there's no point. I know, yeah. There's no trans roles, no way. Yeah. And you've done it anyway, that's yeah. incredible. I know, and it's, like, such an amazing role. Like, I relate to, I relate to my cam uh, hello, my character so much. Um, yes, yeah, so I always acted, I love performing, I did, like, a few, like, sc like, school shows and stuff, and I just sort of stopped after... TikTok came out because I was so focused on that. And then luckily this has come forward and like, that's hopefully where I want to go now, I think. Mm. Well, fingers crossed anyway. I love that, um, what you're saying about like, you know, like proving to those people who said you couldn't do it, yeah. or be in this place, that you could. And yeah. how it just goes to show like how representation on screen is so important. Exactly, yeah. Um, and it can be life-saving. There was an MP in parliament that said that I even know. her husband being in the show last year was, um, Save lives, that representation, yeah. but also it inspires. Like, if if there was more trans representation when you were in school, yeah. maybe your teacher wasn't telling you I know, that exactly. shit, you know? But I didn't know what trans was until I was old enough to look on a computer. I, that's how I knew the way I felt was like, wasn't just me, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it was like, it's so important. Mm. Um, what it like on that note, like who when you were growing up like people or characters that you resonated with most yeah I was thinking about this I was I was trying to think of like what characters but true there was no one like on tv that I really resonated with like singers wise I was a big Rihanna fan at the time like I, I really resonated with her music like just like being you and being free I really like yeah Rihanna was I was a big Riri girl and like just like I love Beyonce like I'm not gonna lie like I was just I think just like almost yeah, like empowering women, women. Yeah, have exactly. A like even now, like Beyonce is still like my treadmill track. Do you know, like Sweet Dreams on the treadmill. Nothing can the stop treadmill track. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I love that you have that as yeah, a I know. treadmill. My, this is my I've never admitted that to anyone. So, like, <laughs> that's an exclusive. And if you see me at the gym and you wonder why I'm starting, it's because I'm listening to Beyonce Sweet Dreams. <laughs> cool. So before this role. You built a community on TikTok, sharing your outfits, friends, and then even your first dates. Yeah. Do you remember what the first TikTok you ever posted was? Oh, I think... I'm trying to... Because you use TikTok so much. When we were yeah. researching, we couldn't even get to the beginning. I know, I did it when it... so many, you've been so on for ages. I think... I must have done it the summer before lockdown. Mm -hmm. So, like, 2019. I think I just posted a few videos of, like, me just lip-syncing. And then I think the first one that went viral must have been like I'm trying to think I think it was god I'm, I think I just did like that you know the all like the old like dance trends I used to yeah, do one yeah, of them yeah. I think one of them did really well and I was like oh my god this is crazy and then I went to school and I had like 10,000 followers and I was like oh my god guys. and the shit like I, you never believe what happened last night <laughs> like I was listening to Sweet Dreams and I was like on TikTok no yeah um <laughs> like yeah and it was I think it was definitely like a dance trend or some sort of stupid thing and then I was like oh my god I didn't realize this is actually like a mm. thing I think that has been a thing whereas a lot of people have like really grown their following from doing like fun TikTok trends yeah. and then have realised wait actually yeah, I, I, I've got things I yeah, can say I and, like fell into yeah. it I didn't really once I knew that um, when I was posting trans content it was doing really well and I could see the response it was getting like positively like forgetting about the negative stuff like and the people that I was helping that's what really drove me to like properly mm. look at it as like a career path and try and take it as far as possible. Yeah, that's amazing. It is amazing that, like, you've s started your platform, like, through something like social media. Yeah. And then that's helped you yeah. then do this, like, absolutely phenomenal achievement. It's, Thank you. You should be really proud of yourself. Thank you, Thank you. It's great, yeah. Um, how have you seen the platform and community change over the last few years? I think it's community? definitely got... I think a lot of people are definitely way more outspoken. 100% but I feel like negativity is definitely a lot worse than it used to be I think people definitely have so much confidence behind a screen to say what they want to say and I think people 
I know the platform's so much bigger than it used to be. Like before with TikTok, I think especially like, I had around like 200K when lockdown hit. Mm -hmm. And for lock I think lockdown just boosted it for everyone. Like, everyone was obsessed I with really TikTok. Like yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it just sort of, after that, I think everyone, what I would think is, I think because influencers are so, accessible yeah and they share most of their life people generally think they can have an opinion and like say what they want to say which is the only thing with tiktok that i'd say has got worse people generally mm. think they can say i guess as your platform gets bigger yeah and more you have people like think that maybe you're i think people when you're a public figure i think people forget that you're an actual person yeah and i think that's the bottom yeah, line exactly. and i don't think it matters like what channel or anything it's anything it's yeah. the press it's anywhere, it's so overwhelming and so horrid that when you're to a certain level in their opinion, you're free access. Yeah, exactly. And that's it. And I think you won't and see I think it. That's a huge, it's like you do see yeah. it. I see it all my tagged. Like, yeah, I think that's definitely a big thing is people mm. just think that they can sort of, they have the right to say what they want. Which mm. is like, you know, you don't really do that. Yeah, definitely. I think also, I think one of the things chatting to people and talent that we work with over the past year is how many people that have said to me they just don't read comments no, anymore. No, I don't. Like the comment section yeah. whatsoever. To, yeah, because even... Even if it's positive yeah. or negative. I read yeah. the first few, because um, I like to see, because before it hits a For You page, I like to see what the comments are. Or I'll check the next day when the top comments will filter through. But to be fair, I've, I've sort of... I go through stages that it really affected me and it doesn't. I remember when I first started, because I had so much shit at school, like, I had the mindset of, like, I went through school, like, you can't phase me. Like, there's nothing you can say that I haven't heard. Um, people have, like, managed to, like, do that. So, um, yeah, I don't really check comments as much anymore. Mm. I think it's a really healthy way to be, like, uh, one of my friends that's, like, has quite a big channel said that even if... I don't want to read them either way because if I read them and they're all negative, it'll make me just depressed and really sad yeah. and in my own head. And if I read too many things all the time that was praising me, I turn into a dick. Yeah. So she was like, I'm I just know. gonna look at anything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like really grounded her actually. Yeah. Um, so because like being like having a lot of followers on socials and it's really massively helped her. Yeah. So I think there is like power in like being able to mentally shift the amount of access that you can yeah. allow people to bring into your life. Yeah, I feel like I have, luckily I have a really good like group of friends and I had this quite, it was like, people, if they don't know you personally, they can't give their personal opinion or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I just have my, if I need my like, like advice or like opinion on outfit or like just anything, I'll take my whole group of friends advice. I won't like, put it out there for everyone to ask because I don't really want to, yeah, I don't know. I feel like, yeah, you don't want to yeah. open a space for I don't someone wanna give, to have an yeah, opinion yeah, exactly. on you and they don't know. I don't want to, yeah, open yeah. a channel for people no, just for to sure. be. Yeah. Another thing, you've been so transparent about your experiences transitioning with mm. your audience online, um, but also able to say when information is obviously like none of your business. Yeah. How do you balance sharing your experiences and respecting your own privacy at the same time? I feel like when I first started, Truthfully, I used to share everything. Like I used to think that um, the more I shared, the more I would help. But now I've, the older I've got, the more I realise like I can have things to myself. And I sort of, now I know there's certain things that I, what I always think about is like, I, when I was younger, I forgot that this video will be seen by, can be seen by literally anyone. So like now I'm more in the mindset of like, would this embarrass me, would this upset me if like, my next door neighbour knew this, or do you know what I mean? I think it would really upset me if my yeah. next door neighbour yeah. saw some of my TikTok. I know, yeah, this is what I was thinking. <laughs> Maybe I need mom, to start thinking about that. My mum's <laughs> uh, friend was like, oh yeah, like all my uh, clients like follow your daughter. I'm like, oh, do they? Right, I need to really be careful what I say online because I'm not, I'm not, um, I wasn't that PG at the time. So I was like, yes, yeah, definitely gonna change that change that a little bit yeah it's sometimes hard I think to also think that wait a sec all these are real people I know <laughs> I know like I remember That's not a number. ages ago <laughs> um I I posted this video, it's, it's taken down now but I posted this like story about like something that happened to me on my out and then it was like a really like funny like sex story or something and um I, po I posted it I went to sleep and the next day it had like like two million views and I was like I didn't realise it would get that many people. And my friend was like, you know, it's like 100 O2s. And I was like, why would you say that to me? Like, we went to the O2, like, we had, like, a concert. And she was like, yeah, like, like 100 times 
these people have seen you tell about your sex story and I was like thank you so much for that <laughs> that's really like it's really Great. as an artist I'm never sharing anything on the internet again like yeah when not. you think of it like that it's like some people's like followings at the moment on TikTok is like almost on part to how many people live in this city yeah and that's I, know. I can't quite wrap my head around I know. it's like where you can't really understand what infinity or like yeah. looks like I know it's a bit it's like that. I think on TikTok, I have like 80 like million likes or something. That's more than the population of the UK. <laughs> I, don't quote me on that. That would make me sick. I know. And I was like, God, I really I think can't. you're right, though, because I was, I get into like Wikipedia yeah. holes every now and I again. Really I think confused. you're right that it's around that number. Yeah, I get really more. confused with like England and I thought Devon was abroad. I mean, to be fair, Devon's really nice. So <laughs> it's like being I used on to holiday. I it was abroad. abroad. <laughs> like when I was younger, I said it in the class <laughs> and everyone was like, who is you're this like, girl? Like, yeah. what is she on about? <laughs> Yeah, so I'm, I'm screaming. I get confused about maybe the population of Devon might follow me. I have to Google that. That'd be nice. Yeah, that'd be them. nice. Shout out to Devon. <laughs> While you're off at, uh, at twos after but be and good humoured on social media, yeah. um, it can be emotionally distressing topics that are discussed daily as a yeah. person who's affected by them. How do you compress it away from social media and protect your mental health? I think when I post online, I don't go on my TikTok after like I make an active effort to like not go on it all night. And even though what I realise now, even though it's my job, I really try and just go off my phone. I spend time with like my close friends. I like to go out and do things like read a book. I'm a massive book reader. But yeah, like yeah, like I love um, any sort of like romance, like thrillers and stuff. Like I feel like just sort of it takes you like it's just an escape, isn't it? Really. Yeah, I think we need to take more space to read. And yeah, off our I love to read I, I love journaling as well. It's something yeah. that's one of my New Year's resolutions to journal. I've done it every day, and I feel like that's made a massive difference. Like just like going to a park, even though it's absolutely like disgusting weather, and like just just chatting shit. Do you, a few people when I've asked any topics on mental health throughout the podcast um, a lot of them says journaling is yeah. absolutely helpful I know I didn't think like I didn't really know what it could do but just venting to someone that's literally not a person <laughs> like it is just yeah. incredible yeah. and you can say whatever and you know you're not going to be judged like and like sometimes mm. I draw like a little like also, just... I started therapy this year and yeah. I, uh, which I'm like so happy for, it was yeah. the first time in my life that I had like a little bit of disposable income and I was yeah. like, do you know what, I'm going to put it in yeah. therapy because I think I need it. So one of the things that I really need is not to sometimes problem solve, I honestly, I need to just get everything off, yeah. every single thing off, out of my chest, yeah. out of my brain as much as I could physically say about it, and then I'm fine. I don't yeah. need to just, to, I just need to get it off my chest, yeah. and then I feel fine. And I think journal it, journaling is like such an amazing thing for that as yeah. well. I was talking to someone about that today, but that is the most affordable therapy that yeah. you can actually have. Exactly. I used to get therapy when I was younger, when I first came out, and like, I had it for around two years, and it was like the best thing I've ever yeah, done. Yeah, absolutely. I've, I recommend it to anyone, even if you've got quite good mental health, like it's just, it's such a good thing if you can absolutely it's incredible absolutely i think it should be the free accessible mm -hmm. everywhere everyone should have it yeah I agree. on speed dial whenever they want it they should yeah. have it we're briefly interrupting this podcast to tell you about the new features on the tiktok app so you can level up your creative career and do it with tiktok I use TikTok to search anything and everything. The search hub on TikTok allows you to search and explore a wide variety of content in the TikTok community, whether it's searching and learning new skills like how to file your taxes, or just searching for fellow creatives to help build your creative community. To search on TikTok, tap the search icon in the top right of your screen. Enter your search and be as specific as possible to find what you're looking for. When you land on the search results, you can also see different results of trending videos, hashtags, sounds, lives, creators, and even TikTok shops. Also, you might not know that when searching for trends, the trend originators will appear as the first video. Follow the TikTok newsroom for the latest updates on new tools and features. And now back to the podcast. This is a nice one. Okay. Because you're really great at like sharing your experiences yeah, and advising stuff online correct. and helping other yeah. people who are going through things. So what's the best piece of advice you've received from your family, friends or community of support? I think my friend always said to me like, if you're doing you and like you're solely being you, then you shouldn't care 
what anyone else thinks. Like, if you're genuinely like doing what you believe in and what makes you happy, then you cannot think about anyone else's opinion. I think if you're authentically being yourself, then know what like you can't care what anyone else says because like you know what you're doing is how you feel. Do you know what I'm trying to say? I'm trying to say it in, like, yeah, words, absolutely. Like, I'm trying to say it in like words, but <laughs> like <laughs> you can do it again if you didn't think you explained it. I'm trying so, to get how to word it. No, but I've. I think, yeah, just... Trying to be... It's, it's good to be as actively you as possible. Yeah. You shouldn't feel bad about being you. Exactly. Like someone shouldn't make yeah. you feel... Like, you can't... Don't feel embarrassed for being yourself. When I used to get so insecure about being trans, and my friend was like, you're, you're, you can't change it. Like, this is who you are. Therefore, when someone tries to make you feel embarrassed or, like, disgusted in your own self, like, no, because it's who you are. Like, you're mm. perfect the way you are. Do you know what I mean? Um... And then my next one is, what brings you gender euphoria? I I think it's one thing that I actually do really love about my job. Like, I feel like me as my transition, I feel quite complete at this pre like present moment. But what gives me real joy and like makes me really happy is seeing like young trans people discover things or do really well, or, like see other LGBT people like just become themselves. That really makes me like happy inside. Like that's one thing I love about being on this show is when it comes out. Like, just I know how many people it's going to affect and make people. Because um, you know, being friends with Elle on the show and being two trans characters that are friends, I think it will be such a big. It's so exciting. I'm mean, like, I think just yeah, seeing people happy makes me happy. It's also something really truly amazing when you look at like casting and you always have like token gestures of casting yeah. so you have like this is your trans representation throughout the yeah. whole six seasons and I that's know. it you never get to see trans this is, relationships this is why, this is why when flesh. the um this is why when the casting call came through i was so confused i was like but they already have l so i was like this i was like is it a trans one like, yeah i was like oh my god like really pushing the boat out like they're doing they're going be, like not beyond but they're doing more yeah. than anyone else has really like I think yeah it's mm. so fun I think is that saying I think a lot of people say it in the queer community is that like I can't speak on the whole queer community exactly because we all have our own different, exactly you know experiences yeah. and xyz mm -hmm. so I think that that, that, I think that's honestly why I personally love Hot, Hot Stops so much is because they have gone out and cast not just one person, exactly. but three or exactly. well, two or four and yeah. the whole cast. Yeah. <laughs> so it's I think, just, it, yeah, it's incredible. So it it's is really such, they've really, they've killed it. Like, I'm so proud to be part of the cast. Mm. It's weird to say that because I haven't really, this is my first like interview. Do you still feel like it's not real yet? Yeah. I think I was looking back at videos when I found out and I was like, it still doesn't, I think when it, it didn't feel real tight on set. And I was like, and I met the cast and I met Alice and I was like, Alice, Alice, Alice. And it was, um, and then it started to feel real. And then when, it, when we wrapped and I was like, okay, now it's like, I filmed it now, like it can't, like they can't take me off it, fingers crossed. So like, it's happening <laughs> They can't now. cut me out yeah, now. Exactly, like, I was like, what's well, happening in. now? So yeah, like. It's filmed, exactly. it's in LA, they can't cut me <laughs> now. <laughs> so yeah, that's my mindset. I was like, well now, yeah, yeah. So. no, that's so exciting. I'm so excited for you when the world can see. I don't think it feel real till um, it's like on my Netflix screen, and then I'll be like, okay, this is scary. How do you feel about watching yourself on the TV? I don't know. I, see, <laughs> when the certain shots that they filmed, and I could see my face on camera, I was like, that is the worst side profile. Like, it was like some angles they'd film, and be like, this is, I really don't want this <laughs> for millions of people to see, but hey ho. So I think the whole time I'll probably be judging the way I look or what I'm saying. No, but... uh, do you know, I think we're all slightly guilty of it. Yeah. Like, filming this video podcast, I've demanded that I've sat in this seat <laughs> on this side, side yeah. every single so episode, side, so, so I'm, I'm guilty happy. of it as well. <laughs> but yeah, no, it must be like the most surrealist thing to mm. see yourself on TV. I know. It must be. But I'm excited for you to experience it yeah. on a show that's like truly represented you as a person and yeah, I yeah. can't wait for no, that. I'm so excited to watch it. Um, I'm going to ask you my last question I ask everybody okay. on the show, um, which is because this is on the Bricks Learner platform. Yes. So it's a platform that we set up to offer alternative education methods to people in the creative industry. Yeah. And make it a bit more accessible. Yeah. For those who normally can't access it, or it's very gatekeepy out here, yeah. so we try and break that down. Good. So I ask everyone, what's one thing that you learnt this week? It could be anything. God, I'm trying to think. I think it's actually a life lesson, 
which I know it's a bit of a soft story, but um, <laughs> like I've had a lot of friends recently that have been a bit shit and like I've had to cut them off. And I think it's something about, I'm trying to think what, just like, don't be afraid to like- Cut people off. Yeah, that I'd, like, I think like, it's, better, it's better yeah. to be by yourself than to be friends with people that aren't good friends. Do you know what I mean? Like you don't, you want to have, I think friends are so important and having friends that, you know, really bring you up is, you can't have it any other way really. Mm. So I think that's something that I've, just a life lesson that I've had to learn is, especially because I moved to London and when I was at home, I used to have bad friends and I cut them all off and I moved here and I thought that wouldn't happen here, but it did. And That happened to me twice when I moved here. I, I went weird. into one friend group, it was horrific, yeah. finally left and accidentally fell into an even worse one. Just really toxic, yeah. not supportive. This is what I... Competition exactly, in the yeah. community. I hated it. Exactly. And it took me so long to find like my community, actually. Yeah. And now, mm-hmm. on this, I have like my team, who yeah. are my friends, the Bricks team, and I have about three of the friends. Yeah. And my partner, and I yeah. keep it to that. My friends said to me I'm that, like... I'm happy with that. I'm um, happier. Yeah, my friends said to me, like, you can count your friends in your hand, like your close, like, ride or die friends in your hand, that's, that's, I, it's always minimum, oh, that's so bad, you know what I mean? I don't want to have, like, loads of friends, yeah. so I can always go out, and all, I can just, I don't know, I, I like staying in, I'm a home, yeah. I'm the same as you, yeah. I like reading, mm-hmm. do you know what I mean? I like going out now and again, yeah. but I also just, I always, like, I appreciate going out more. When yeah, I, yeah, with friends, though, not just, like, people that you are hanging yeah. out with for the sake of hanging exactly, out with. Yeah. I think, yeah. yeah, it's something that I've learned is I'm always, my makeup artist told me before, like, I stay very much in my own lane. Like, I focus on myself, I'm happy for anyone. Like, and I think, like, when you're so, when I'm, I've always been brought up like that. So when I have had friends that were like, not so much the same and sort of would make little digs or little comments or be quite toxic and like, leave me out, especially after Hearts if I got like announced, I had quite a few friends that sort of went a bit weird. That's really sad. Yeah, so. but uh, yeah, and I think it's that's my life lesson is just like, you know, no matter how close you've been, how long you've been close to someone, like, you know, if they're a bad mate, they're a bad mate. Also, there's definitely a thing where everyone will tell you to leave a toxic romantic relationship. Exactly, this is yeah, exactly. You. But friendship. Because you want to hold on to it, like you want to, you think that like, I guess obviously I've never been in a relationship, but um, it's probably the same. But yeah, I think that's if you're if you're looking for a sign. To cut off your bad friends and message. If any of that just related to you, I know. Even though we just went back and forth, and it's fine. That was. But also, it's like that cutting off friendships is heartbreaking. Yeah. I found it more traumatizing than romantic relationships actually, because I get more of a like um, disappointment. I've like I've really disappointed myself to lose a friend or vice versa. Yeah. You really hurt me for me to get out of this relationship. Yeah, and I think, you know, you rely on your friends a lot and I ended, I fell out with a lot of my friends at the end of last year and it's now trying to become comfortable in myself again. Not as in like, but just like in my own company. It's Mm -hmm. something that everyone needs to learn and do because you need to be happy by yourself before you can, like, you know what I mean? Like if I, now if I have a, like, a day at home by myself, I know that I'm going to be fine and I can, like, get myself together. Whereas before, I'd have to always rely on mates to, like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, yeah. absolutely. That makes, that's a lovely way to thank end you. the serious question part. Yeah, thank <laughs> you. And now we're going to play fun game. Okay, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited for this game. Okay, so in this segment of the podcast, we're going to call it Saved by the Bell. Okay, cool. <laughs> and we're going to ask you some would you rather questions and then when the timer stops, you can stop. Okay, cool. Who's setting the timer? We've got timer, you got the timer? Yeah. How long is the timer? Have we got to do it quite quick? How many questions have you got? Ten. Uh, quick ones. Uh, five minute timer? Seven minute timer? Ten minute timer? Five minute timer? You can do five minutes. That's five, five minutes? Seconds okay. Each. Okay. Number one. Okay. Got to be nervous. Well, if we get through it before the timer comes off, you have to... You have to go... You have to just ring a bell and we're going to have to act surprised. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, would you rather date night or night out with friends? Um, see, I, I've never had a boyfriend, so night out with friends, but then date night is quite fun. I think if I had no friends all the way, my okay. friends are really fun on night out. Like, 
but also I mean, I'm working so hard, so it's nice to like go out with friends and enjoy. So I think friends. What about you? You can answer. You should answer them as well. So different. I live with my boyfriend, so I would choose a night out with friends because yeah. I always have date night. Me and my boyfriend have like made this thing where yeah. we. I want to just be. This sounds so corny. Yeah. But I want to just be. I want to be grateful that I'm alive and appreciate my life. No, I like that though. Yeah, I, I just want to stop being. I don't know if you've ever suffered from anxiety and depression. I feel yeah. like you just when you get out of it, you just want to appreciate, appreciate yeah. every day. Yeah. Right? So we cook together. Every, well, I say he cooks for me actually. Yeah, I'm a shit cook. <laughs> Beans and toast. <laughs> so bad at cooking. Yeah. I've set fire to things in my I've house. I've set fire one time. I got home drunk and I set fire to my microwave. I put, I put, <laughs> the, the one rule in life, you don't put tin foil in a microwave. That's oh, the one no, thing. You do. Everyone, to, don't put tin foil in the microwave. This is a one. This is my life lesson, actually. Never put tin foil. It just doesn't end up well. It was awful. I was like, oh my god, the flap's on fire. It was horrendous. Oh my god. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Really no. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Next. <laughs> That's my life lesson. Okay. Number two. Live in Mark Zuckerberg's metaverse or Elon Musk's Twitter. This is. So Mark Zuckerberg is Facebook, right? Facebook and the metaverse, like that make-believe land that he's created, that's right. where nobody's on. Right, okay. <laughs> or Twitter. See, Twitter's scary, but also Twitter's so funny. Like, I love Twitter and I hate it at the same time. I think Twitter just for the bants. I think it'd be like... Twitter quite... for the bants! <laughs> like, I, I want to be... Like... I actually want to be in the stats bit, actually. Yeah, like, <laughs> like, Twitter just makes me giggle. Like, it is really toxic at the same time. Like, my favourite memes are on Twitter. Also, then you keep... Yeah. You, you still like, get involved in the news. Also. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, do you know, I have no experience of Mark Zuckerberg's metaverse. Maybe I can tell you what it is. Be quite, oh, maybe it's so, that. Twitter's uh, what I know. Okay. I'm not really a Facebook girl, I can't lie. Number three. Yeah. Spend the weekend in, I'm going to change it because you live in London now, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to change it. Okay. Spend the weekend, weekend in Berlin or Paris. 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 I've never been to Paris. I went to Paris once when I was younger, to Disneyland. Um, yeah, Paris, I think. What I want to go you? soon. Oh, I, wanna, I haven't done like the, I haven't done any of this. I haven't done the Eiffel Tower or like the Louvre. I want to go there and just like, God, I like, Eiffel Tower's scary. It's okay. so high. It's so tall really? and it wobbles. Oh, oh God. <laughs> it really Berlin then. It really wobbles. If you go in the summer, it's chill. Okay. I don't like heights though, so I'm sport. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really of, I'm, speaking through my lens I'm not a of, of heights how I view the world. I think, yeah, Paris, and also apparently, like going out in Paris must be really fun. Yeah, Paris is everything is like uh, very small and yeah. around dinner, which I love. Yeah. So it's a very dinner and wine yeah. and a small room, and they go out a lot like that. Okay, cool. But they do have raves as well underground, yeah. like five. Five stories yeah, in the I think Paris because also it's like really close. And it's romantic. Yeah. Okay, Paris. Uh, be underdressed or overdressed? Oh. For what occasion? Like a. <laughs> just in life. <laughs> There's think, no explanation. It's like... just be underdressed or overdressed. I think you can never. I think overdressed. Okay. I think, yeah. Are you going to say because you can never overdress? I mean, to a certain aspect, you can, but I mean. I mean, like, I wouldn't wear like a ball gown to Tesco. Actually, no, yes, I would. I did some crazy things in lockdown. I would. There's the only place that you could go to yeah. like just experiment. Yeah. So we'd like go in with like face masks on, oh, me yeah. and my friend that was staying with me at the time. Oh, that's so Like cool. we'd go in wearing most ridiculous outfits and like queue. Do you remember it's a queue yeah. to get I used, Tesco? I used to have to go, I used to go get my Instagram pictures in Tesco. Yeah. I did a brand deal in Tesco once. So overdressed. Yeah. I, I, yeah, overdressed. Yeah. Okay, number five. Be an extra in an Oscar-winning movie or the lead in a box office flop? Oh. <laughs> um, okay, no, just because, just to be around Oscar-winning people. I only want to do good work, fingers crossed, moving forward. So, Watch. the extra yeah. in an Oscar-winning movie. But, I mean, if it, but sometimes flops are really, actually, no, box office flop. Because then, like, at least you, like... I just, think it's memorable, yeah. even if it's a flop, Again, right? Again, for the bants. I've never said that word in my life. I don't know what it's <laughs> That's never been something I've ever said. it for the bants. <laughs> I sound like a right lad. Uh, number six, cuddly toys or cuddly boys? Oh, boy. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I have loads of toys and it doesn't do it after a while, does it? Do you know what I mean? Like, 
Has any so far? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to say it's only so far until we can go. But I did not mean like that. Um, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, just. Uh, okay, <laughs> so Kelly toys or Kelly boys? Uh, yeah, Kelly boys. Okay, cute. Yeah. No shame. Yeah. Either is acceptable. Yeah, end up in the pony now. <laughs> Have a sing off with Ariana Grande or dance off with Shakira. Both sound really fun. Yeah. So why Shakira's in jail? Don't quote me on that. Is she not? Forget oh. Shakira if she is. Oh my god, maybe she is, because the taxi. Yeah. Well, they're oh, not but taxi, I'm, 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 right? I'm, I'm a massive fan of Ariana Grande, so definitely Ariana Grande. Also, I can't, I can't dance or sing actually, so I'm fucked either way. So have a sing off then. Yeah, I think that's probably my best option. Okay. <laughs> Oh my god, we're saved! <laughs> I wish it was before that cuddly toy question because that would have made my life a lot easier. <laughs> That's fine. The ones we didn't get to was lose your taste of lose your sense of taste or lose your tense. Oh, I can't even say that. Good job we didn't get to that one. L lose your sense of taste or yeah. lose your sense of smell was the other one. Oh, it might be taste probably. Oh, we're actually it's oh, all smell. Oh, no, Not all taste. smells are great. Yeah. <laughs> So, I'll probably smell then, yeah. <laughs> and then there was wear only stilettos or only Crocs forever. Stilettos. Oh my god, I think Crocs. I know. I love Crocs. But like, I I've got wear. snazzy Crocs in there with diamantes on. Oh my god. They're jazzy. I have, I have platform pink Crocs at home. I know. I love those ones. I know. And then the last one was watch Hot Stop as a series one or series two. That was the last one. <laughs> I think I think season two because I've obviously I mean I'm sure in it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, amazing. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. I'm so me. excited to watch you in Heartstopper. Thank you. And it's best of luck as well for when it comes out. I'm so excited for you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. It's been so fun. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm so happy. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you want to go follow me, I am Belle Priestley on TikTok, YouTube and Instagram. And yeah, uh, that's all. Bye. Okay? Yeah, yeah, perfect. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Bricks I Did That podcast powered by TikTok. Don't forget to follow the Bricks Learner platform to get 50 plus creative opportunities to your inbox every Wednesday. It's free for 30 days or as little as £2.50 a month on our low income version. Thanks so much again and don't forget to follow us on TikTok at, at Bricks Magazine. See you later.